So if you're a musician, you've probably heard that you need a website. Maybe you've spent a lot of time, energy, and effort into your website and it doesn't really get you results. So here's the truth. You don't need a website. You need a website that grows your music business. And in this video, what I wanna do is I wanna introduce you to my music site framework designed specifically to market music online. And in this video, I'm gonna break it down for you so that you can apply these principles to your website and start seeing some serious results. All right, so let's talk about the music site framework. I wanna explain the basics of what the music site framework is, the pages that make it up. I'm gonna talk about the fan grabber and what it is. And I'm also gonna give you an example of how this applies in practice. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started here with the basics. So the music site framework is essentially a set of rules that you can follow that specifically apply to the independent music industry in a way that is guaranteed to grow your music business. But in most cases, it's gonna be either one of two things. You're gonna to wanna to send somebody to your website to get a gig, in which case the purpose of your website would be to get them to contact you. And the second would be you would wanna use your website to acquire leads, all right? Meaning add people to your email list, sell digital products. And the good thing about the framework is that there are some basic pages that we're gonna talk about here in a minute that are included in this framework they're guaranteed to, to make that happen. So you don't have to worry about it. You don't have to think about it. In addition, the role that your music site plays in this framework is always related to monetization. If you have a website and if it hasn't been identified by you in some way to lead to you making money, then you don't need one, all right? You shouldn't have one. I know a lot of people say you need a website. I disagree. If you don't know the role that it plays in growing your music business and how it will eventually lead to you earning income, don't waste your time with it, okay? Make sure you have that first. That's what this is all about. Now, you might be like, oh my gosh, this is so much work. I have to do this all myself. I'm not a web designer. I'm not a developer. Relax, okay? Because there are a few just basic pages that every website has in the first place, and I'm just showing you how to connect the dots so let's talk about pages. So there are two types of pages. You'll have foundational pages and you'll have supplemental or optional pages. No matter what, you'll need some foundational pages. You'll need a home page, you'll need an about page, you'll need a music page, and you'll need a contact page. So let's talk about these pages in a little bit more detail and then we'll go on to the supplemental optional pages. So for your home page, you need to make sure that all pages link on your home page. You want to think of your home page like a grocery store. So you walk into the grocery store, you'll see the cash registers, then you'll walk through the different aisles, and each aisle is labeled. And wherever you're at, in most cases, you know where you can go to find what you're looking for and to get your bearings. So in the digital world, you know, you're limited to what's on the screen, okay? So you want your home page to be the safe place that they can return to, like the front of the grocery store, wherever they are in your site and always be able to find what they're looking for. So you wanna to link to all pages on your site. And then at the top, you include your fan grabber and I'll talk about that more in a minute. Headline, this is so the people can instantly know that they're in the right place and then a call to action. A call to action is simply a button that takes them to your fan grabber. So that's the top. Now let's talk about your about page, your bio. So in most cases, your bio needs to include your three-part music story. You need to use the three-part music story formula because your story and your bio tie everything together. So that's why. You gotta have your bio, your about page. You could also call it a bio, but that's gotta be on there, okay? So that's the about page. Let's talk about the music page. This is pretty basic. It just links to places where people could listen to your music, whether that be your entire discography, links to all your music on iTunes or Spotify. You could also link to your store, okay? It's just a place people know that they can go to and find your music when they need to. So that's music. Let's move on to contact. So the contact page has one purpose. If somebody wants to get in touch with you, they know exactly where they can go to do that, all right? Whether that be your email address, phone number, social media profiles, a contact form, or a book us form, it all needs to be on that page, okay? Because the last thing you want is for somebody who could move the needle for you, somebody could contact you for a gig, and they can't get in touch with you. This is the place that people can go to where all the information that they need to get in contact with you is right there. So that's why the contact page is one of the foundational pages. All right, so in summary, homepage, make sure that it's easy to find, easy to get to, and every single page links to the homepage. Your about page, include your story and your music, make it compelling, and then your music page. Let it be a hub for all of your music, not just places like iTunes and Spotify where people can listen to your music and also link to your store where people can buy it as well. The final foundational page is your contact page. Everything that people can use to get in touch with you goes on this page. 
So those are the foundational pages. Let's talk about supplemental pages. So supplemental pages, this depends on the purpose of the site. So if you're selling digital products from your website, if that's the main purpose of it or one of the purposes, then you want to have a store, obviously. So your store can be a link to a Shopify page. If you're doing WordPress, it could be the WooCommerce plugin. You can use Banzoogle. They have a new updated feature where they enable you to set up your own store on your site. So whatever it is, you want to link to that in your website. Okay, so that's store. And then media, like if you have a press kit or if you have photos, for media or press, whenever you do an interview, like your logo, all of your files, this would be where you would send those people to. So if somebody had contacted you, hey, I wanna hire you for a gig, I need some promo materials, let me see an EPK, you would send them to your media or press kit page. And if you wanna keep people updated through like a news feed, you have a blog page or a news page, okay? So those are the supplemental or optional pages in the music site framework. All right, so let's talk about the fan grabber, okay? So you're probably like, what in the heck is the fan grabber? Okay, so a fan grabber is typically a free or a low entry offer. So this could be a free plus shipping offer. Manifest does a lot of this stuff and we did his website using the music site framework. He does a free plus shipping offer. So what it is is you can get the CD for free, but all you do is pay shipping. It could also be like a free download or a welcome packet. Download my newest song or download the single. You've seen this before, that's a fan grabber. If you're wanting people to come to your site to hire you to do a gig, your contact us form is gonna be your fan grabber. So those are the different types of fan grabbers. Let's talk about location. So there are a lot of different places you can put your fan grabber. The most important place is going to be at the top of your home page. The fan grabber is often the whole reason you want people to go into your website in the first place. So that's why you want to put it top, front and center on your home page. You can also put it on your about page, your music page, your contact us page. The point is you just want to make sure it's easy to find. So that sums up the fan grabber, what it is, the types that there are, and the location where to put it on your site. So if you want to see an example of the music site framework in action, we actually use this exact framework on manifest.com. He's a billboard charting artist. He's independent. He makes the exact same framework for his website that I just laid out for you. So if you're interested in learning more about the music site framework, I have a really cool free cheat sheet that you could sign up for. Just go to this link or the link below in the description. It's just a little workbook that shows the different pages and just gives you some kind of locations that you could use to help you apply this framework to your existing website. Because chances are you have a lot of this in place and you just might need to tweak a few things to make sure that your website is really working hard for you. So that wraps up this video. Until next time, this is Greg from MusicianMonster.com. Rock on and prosper.